Before researching for this video, I was under the impression that the second Bleach movie, The Diamond Dust Rebellion, was disliked by the majority of Bleach fans, but apparently a few people really enjoyed this movie and even believe it to be better than Memories of Nobody. Is this movie as bad as I remember it to be? Let's check out the story told and look at the pros and cons of this movie, and if it improves upon the flaws of the first Bleach movie. Before the video begins, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any of my future uploads. Bleach Movie 2 was released on December 22nd, 2007. Its theatrical run began in Japanese cinemas while episode 153 aired on TV that same week. The story of this movie revolves around Toshiro Hitsugaya and the mystery behind the ownership of his Zanpakuto. Let's briefly go over the events that take place during this movie before analysing the pros and cons of this movie. Squad 10 and their captain Toshiro Hitsugaya along with his lieutenant Matsumoto Rangiku are ordered to escort a sacred item called the King Seal. While the rare item is being transported, the carriage carrying the King Seal is attacked. During the attack, the King Seal is stolen by a rogue Shinigami called Sojiro Kusaga. He is assisted by his accomplices, who are two girls called Yin and Yang. Hitsugaya, who recognizes the Shinigami Kusaga, decides to pursue him. He abandons his squad and Rangiku as he looks back at her with a face of sadness before leaving to chase after Kusaga. Rangiku is abandoned and hears of the casualties from the attack. The Soul Society deem Hitsugaya to be a traitor and place his whole squad in isolation within the Squad 10 barracks. Ichigo in the human world comes across an area which is sealed off by a wall. Frustrated that somebody may be up to no good near his home, he breaks through the seal and he sees the casualties from the recent attack. Ichigo encounters Captain Soifon who informs him about what occurred. She also tells Ichigo to report to her if he knows anything about Hitsugaya's whereabouts. Uryu joins Ichigo as Soifon leaves with her squad. They try to make sense of what is happening as it begins to snow. Uryu realizes that Hitsugaya must have been concealing his Ryatsu to be in hiding. Suddenly, a worn out Hitsugaya appears and collapses in front of them. Ichigo takes Hitsugaya into Kurosaki Clinic so that he can recover his strength. Hitsugaya dreams of his days at the Shinigami Academy as he sees Kusaka compliment him as the boy genius who is consistently scoring well in his classes. He dreams about how they train together back at the academy and is awoken as he hears Kusaka ask him if the two of them are friends. Ichigo, who is concerned about Hitsugaya, checks up on him and advises advises him to rest, as he will call Orihime to check up on his wounds in the morning. But the following morning, Hitsugaya sneaks out of Kurosaki Clinic, but Ichigo confronts him and asks him why he is behaving like he has something to hide. Ichigo tries to offer to help Hitsugaya with whatever it is that is bothering him, but he denies that there's something going on. But Ichigo asks if he is concerned because of Kusaka, which prompts Hitsugaya to be surprised by the mention of that name. Ichigo assumes that it was Kusaka who attacked and stole the King's Seal, but Hitsugaya states that Kusaka is someone who was murdered a long time ago. Ichigo asks who killed Kusaka, but Hitsugaya ignores the question and continues to walk away. When Ichigo tries to stop Hitsugaya, he attacks him. The two of them are then attacked by Kusaka's subordinates, Yin and Yang. They have come to take Hitsugaya with them. Ichigo tries to not let them take him, but Hitsugaya attacks Ichigo and tells him to let him go with them. The three of them overpower Ichigo by attacking him one after the other. They leave while Ichigo, covered in blood, shouts out, asking where he is going before collapsing. He is later walking up by Rukia and Renji, he tells them about how Hitsugaya left with two girls who resembled Arankas, also informing him that Hitsugaya mentioned he needs to get the King's Seal back from someone called Kusaka. Ichigo tells them that he also mentioned that Kusaka had died a long time ago. Renji then returns to the Soul Society to learn more about this mysterious individual called Kusaka. In a flashback, we learn that Hitsugaya and Kusaka are standing in front of the Central 46, who declare that there can only be one owner of Hyorimaru, as they cannot be two Shinigami who possess the same Zanpakuto. There has always been one rightful owner for each Zanpakuto. Hitsugaya attempts to resolve the dilemma by stating he will relinquish ownership of Hyorimaru, but the Central 46 states that this is not his decision to make, alluding to the two of them having to face off against each other to the death to decide the rightful owner of the Zanpakuto. Back in the present day, Ichigo and the others try to investigate Hitsugaya's connection to Kusaka, but keep coming up with dead ends, primarily due to Hitsugaya 
Raya not speaking about his past and not having really opened up with anyone, including his own Lieutenant Rangiku. She tells Renji she has never heard the name Kusaka before. Renji hands over Hitsugaya's captain coat to Rangiku, telling her that he left it at Ichigo's house. Rangiku, noticing there is blood on Hitsugaya's coat, realizes that he must be hurt. Rangiku is unsure whether to feel happy that Hitsugaya is still alive or upset because he has abandoned everybody. Back in the past, we see Kusaka obtaining the Zanpakuto Hyoremaru. An overjoyed Kusaka tells Hitsugaya that it is amazing that they both have the same power. In present time, Captain Shunsui and his Lieutenant Nanao look through the library to find any records of Kusaka, but they find nothing. They do, however, note that there is a student who is missing from the class that Hitsugaya graduated from. They learn that this missing student is from Northern Rukongai and is named Sojura Kusaka. However, this person is confirmed to have died. As Captain Shunsui leaves the library for a walk, he is confronted by Kusaka, who battles with the captain. Meanwhile, in the human world, Hitsugaya is confronted by a group of Shinigami led by the two lieutenants Kira and Hisagi. They order Hitsugaya to return to the Soul Society, but he has no intention of returning. They battle with Hitsugaya to try and subdue him and escort him back. They plea with him to not fight back as he will be accused of treason. Hitsugaya resists and attacks the Shinigami with his Bankai, Daiguren Hyorimaru. Back in the Serite, Shunsui is left injured after his battle with Kusaka. His wounds are tended to by Captain Unohana and Squad 4. The rest of the Shinigami learn of Hitsugaya's actions after he badly injured Hisagi and Kira. They are shocked that he would hurt his own comrades that were on his side not too long ago. The next day in the Soul Society, Head Captain Yamamoto declares in the captain's meeting that capturing Hitsugaya is top priority and that he now has an execution order placed on him. Ichigo in the human world learns of this news and is confused as to why such an order would be issued. Byakuya along with Mayuri question how Hyoremaru could have attacked Captain Shunsui in the Soul Society and Lieutenants Kira and Hisagi in the human world at the same time. Mayuri begins researching the possibility of twin Zanpakuto existing. He begins to look into the historical library of the Soul Society. Another flashback reveals that the Central 46 ordered Hitsugaya and Kusaka to battle to the death to determine the rightful owner of Hyorimaru. During their battle, they are interrupted by the Kagan, who are the elite assassins from the Stealth Division. They reveal that the Central 46 has declared Hitsugaya as the rightful owner of Hyorimaru, proceeding to then restrain Hitsugaya as they run their blades through Kusaka. He starts panting while in his final moments he recalls how he devoted his entire life to the Soul Society, to then be betrayed by them in the end. Hyorimaru fades from Kusaka's hands as he dies. Back in the present day, Ichigo is attacked by Kusaka and his allies, and he is shown how Kusaka was murdered and learns of his past with Hitsugaya. Ichigo relates to Hitsugaya as he too felt his view of the world change after losing his mother. He assumes Hitsugaya must have similarly been affected by the death of Kusaka. It is clear that both of them built up emotions within themselves so as to not burden the people around them. Ichigo realizes that when he bottled up his emotions, he was in fact causing those around him to worry and feel concerned for his well-being. Ichigo, remembering the desperate look on Hitsugaya's face, realizes it was like the look he had back when his mother died. Hitsugaya is entirely shouldering the burden of Kusaka's death. He feels responsible for it. Ichigo now understands why Hitsugaya has been behaving irrationally and pushing everyone away. Kusaka gets away as Ichigo is left to battle the female Arankas. Meanwhile, we see that Hitsugaya finally confronts Kusaka, asking him to return the King's Seal, but Kusaka intends to use it to exact his plan. The King's Seal begins glowing as it pulls Hitsugaya towards Kusaka, as the two of them are teleported away. Rukia and Ichigo can sense an incredible surge of Reiatsu. The Aranka girls Yin and Yang reveal it is the power of the King's Seal, stating that Hitsugaya and Kusaga have begun their vengeful plan against the Soul Society. Hitsugaya and Kusaka appear on Sokyoku Hill with the increasing Reiatsu of the King's Seal alerting the Soul Society to their location. The Shinigami prepare for battle. Kusaka tells Hitsugaya of the power of the King's Seal, about how it can manipulate time and space via teleportation, thus explaining how Kusaka is alive, as he is able to undo his wounds or injuries by returning to a form before he sustained the injuries. The Shinigami then arrive and begin battling with Kusaka, while in the human world, Chad and Uryu battle Yin and Yang, allowing Ichigo and Rukia to head to the Soul Society. Back in Sokyoku Hill, the Shinigami are about to clash with Hitsugaya and Kusaka, but before they can fight, they are stopped by a Gatsuka Tencho from Ichigo. Head Captain Yamamoto also arrives and states that the King's Seal brought Kusaka back to life and resurrected him into Huekumundo. Kusaka confirms this and reveals his plan to become the King of the Soul Society. Hitsugaya then attacks Kusaka, revealing it was never his intention to be his accomplice, much to his surprise. Everyone is 
confused and wonders why Hitsugaya abandoned everyone if he didn't intend to betray the Gotai 13. Ichigo and Rukia explain that Hitsugaya feels responsible for everything and could not deal with having to kill Kusaka again. His emotions led him to pursue Kusaka and abandon his post, resulting in him being branded as a traitor. Kusaka rejects Hitsugaya's help and cuts the king's seal in half. Ichigo arrives and snaps him back into his senses by persuading Hitsugaya to let everyone help him and to not shoulder the burden of responsibility on his own. Preparing to fight, they watch as the dust settles and Kusaka appears in a new form as an iced dragon. The Iranka girls also arrive beaten and beg for Kusaka's forgiveness, but he traps them both in ice. He then begins gaining more power as the King's Seal releases more Ryatsu, going out of control. Mayuri comments that if this continues, then the Serite will be destroyed. The Iranka girls have now been transformed into large hollows as they keep the B-side company, while the A-side, which includes Rukia, Ichigo and Hitsugaya, head for Kusaka, who is located at the top of his stone tower he has just created. Hollows block their path, but with the help of Renji, Byakuya, Ikaku and the others, they fend them off. Yamamoto, Komamura and Mayuri are all holding back the expansion of the Reiatsu Dome formed by the King's Seal, while both Hitsugaya and Ichigo make their way to the tower where Kusaka is located. As they reach the top, Ichigo and Hitsugaya begin to battle Kusaka. Ichigo stabs Kusaka and then fires a Getsuka Tensho through his head. The rest of Kusaka's body shatters as everything begins to return to normal. As the dust clears, a breathless Kusaka emerges. Ichigo respectfully tells Hitsugaya to take care of the rest. They both charge towards each other and clash one last time. As Kusaka's blade shatters, he admits that Hitsugaya is the rightful owner of Yorimaru. His body begins to disappear as Hitsugaya tells him they will always be friends. The King Seal reforms and drops to the ground. Ichigo hands the King Seal to Hitsugaya as he consoles him. As the movie wraps up, Hitsugaya places Kusaka's broken Zanpakuto on his grave as he says farewell to his friend. After re-watching this movie, I can only say that I was expecting more from a movie centred around Hitsugaya, who is easily one of the most popular characters within Bleach. This movie just feels lacklustre, from how Ichigo abruptly defeats Kusaka, to how Kusaka's motivation feels rather contrived and unconvincing. He randomly just states towards the end of the movie he wants to become the king of the Soul Society. It probably would have made more sense if this goal was stated in the beginning. It would have been more in line with his desire for revenge. Even so, a more convincing goal like taking out the Central 46 would have made more sense as they were responsible for his death. The plot of this movie centres around the concept that no two individuals may wield the same Zanpak Do. The Central 46 enforce this rule without any real reason as to why, just simply fate has determined it to be so. In general, from what I have seen online, this movie is enjoyed by a lot of fans, and I can relate to some extent, but overall, Diamond Dust Rebellion leaves much more to be desired. The second Bleach movie falls short in several areas, the most notable being its plot that it is trying to tell. We get to experience Hitsugaya's past, as well as seeing his days spent studying at the academy. Aside from this, all we have left is a generic plot centred around revenge. Kusaka is magically brought back to life through the King's Seal, but we have no idea of knowing if this was purposeful or a mere coincidence. Kusaka somehow now understands the power of the King's Seal and knows the exact day that the seal was changing location. It is established that the relocating of the King's Seal is a highly confidential mission, which only a limited number of people know about. Just how on earth was Kusaka aware that the seal was being transported on that day? This is the first of many plot threads which are not explained within the movie. The next unexplained mystery is why Hitsugaya runs away immediately after everything occurs. I understand seeing Kusaka must have been a shock to him, but he just leaves. Considering he is a captain, you would assume it wouldn't have taken him long to catch up to Kusaka, but Hitsugaya just runs away. He gives no explanation, he exhibits none of the traits of an honourable and well-respected captain. He literally bails on everyone, but in actual fact we quickly learn that he didn't run away, he was just hiding right next to where the ambush just took place. So this then leads directly to head captain Yamamoto who makes the first of his very irrational decisions. He deems Hitsugaya to be a traitor and commands that squad 10 are confined within their housing. He has no faith in Hitsugaya who holds the well-respected position of a captain. No benefit of the doubt is given, he is declared not to be trusted due to breaking the rules and not following orders. The head captain even goes as far as to threaten shutting down the whole of squad 10, which seems a bit overkill if you ask me. Squad 10 didn't really break any rules or disobey any orders. Seems like a stretch to punish them in all fairness. From this moment on, the movie turns Hitsugaya into the most unlikable version of himself. I have yet to see a character go full 180 to the extent that Hitsugaya did in this movie. So he makes his second getaway during the crack of dawn as he runs away from Kurosaki Clinic. Ichigo spots him as he is shoehorned 
spawned into the story as the voice of reason for Hitsugaya. Unlike Head Captain Yamamoto, Ichigo is willing to give absolutely everyone the benefit of the doubt. In the most confusing moment of the whole movie, Hitsugaya teams up with the two Aranka girls and attacks Ichigo before leaving with them. So who even are these two weird Aranka girls? We never see how Kusaka met them, nor is their motivation to help Kusaka explained. They are just there and helping Kusaka for no apparent reason at all. I have no idea where Hitsugaya goes with these Aranka girls, but he doesn't meet Kusaka. The next time we see them, we see the girls speaking to Kusaka and Hitsugaya on his own daydreaming about his past. If someone wants to explain how on earth Hitsugaya ended up in an abandoned factory and not led to Kusaka, I'd be rather grateful. The single most unforgivable scene also plays out in this movie, when none other than Captain Shunsui heads out for a breather and is confronted by Kusaka, who proceeds to off-screen bitch slap Shunsui so hard it leaves him struggling to breathe. Even if he was surprised that Kusaka removed his mask revealing his true identity, I don't think it would have made Shunsui forget his hundreds of years worth of training. Shunsui pretty much just read about Kusaka being some dude that died a long time ago. Would he really be that shocked to discover he is alive, causing him to forget how to hold a sword? Even with the King's Seal in Kusaka's possession, it wasn't even activated at that point. Power scaling clearly was thrown out the window during this movie. I mentioned earlier that Ichigo was shoehorned into the story before, well, I will never understand why he delivered the final blow to Kusaka. So if we examine the final blow, how did Ichigo one-shot kill Kusaka, who was an ice dragon god who obtained the power of the King's Seal, which he never utilised beyond constructing a nice tower to stand on top of? The final confrontation did need to be longer, but with such a predictable plot, I can't say that the issue lies with the end fight. The problem began when Hitsugai decided to run away and hide within 10 minutes of the movie opening, and the Aranka girls turning up for god knows whatever reason. I think it is pretty obvious now that the story was poorly executed at this point. The movie, like the first Bleach movie, also suffers from including way too many characters who don't need to be there. I once again didn't see the point of Uryu, Chad and Orihime in this movie. The only major involvement was from Chad and Uryu, who had a fight with the Aranka girls, and in all honesty, why are they even here? What What is their purpose again? Also, Yuriichi is never mentioned in the movie, nor do we see Urahara, but magically during the final fight, we hear a Shunko out of nowhere and she appears. Also, if they were going to have a movie about Hitsugaya, I'm confused as to why they didn't commit fully to this idea. Instead, we have Ichigo shoehorned into the movie, his involvement felt very forced and unnatural. I think the story would have been improved if Ichigo remained as a supporting role. Despite that long rant about the cons of this movie, I must say that the art and animation is as incredible as ever. The battle sequences are enjoyable to watch if you're not trying to work out the logic behind the sword swings. So the movie did kind of redeem itself during the final battle sequence, which involves everyone once again, and some of the captains get some great screen time like Kimpachi and Byakuya. The soundtrack from the anime also features within the movie along with some newly composed pieces just for this movie. When I first heard about the idea of a movie centred around Hitsugaya and his past, I found it to be a very interesting concept, but ultimately it was executed very poorly. Even the title of the movie makes no sense or holds no meaning. Diamond Dust Rebellion makes it sound like a cool, iced out rebellious battle, but all we got was Hitsugaya running away and hiding, and Kusaka who was accompanied by two random girls he found in Huekamundo, trying to have his cliched revenge plot unfold. In all honesty, this movie felt more like the Diamond Dust disappointment. It definitely had potential and could have been an insightful story about the past of Hitsugaya, but instead it ends up telling a very unoriginal plot which has more holes than you can count. The concept of twin Zanbakdo was interesting, but even upon analysis, how do two people obtain the same Zanbakdo when the essence of the Zanbakdo is generated by each person's unique individual spirit? Hitsugaya in the manga is a voice of reason, especially to characters like Momo, but in this movie he is nothing like his level-headed composed self. He, like the other captains, has a very distinct and well-defined personality, which makes him a joy to follow in the original source material. This movie just failed to translate the likeable traits of Hitsugaya onto the big screen. If you do want to just zone out and watch 90 minutes of great Bleach animation, then this movie is for you. But if you desire a rich, fleshed out story, then look elsewhere.